welcome back to We Watch Movie. I'm Mike. I'm Jay. And this is the continuation of Halloween Horror Month 2018 leading up to the greatness that be Halloween 2018. This is directed by Rick Rosenthal. Uh, it was written by John Carpenter with a six pack in him uh, because I don't think he ever really truly wanted to do this. I think John Carpenter truly wanted to go straight into Halloween 3 territory and do different stories because he felt like he told his story with, with uh, Michael Myers. Tommy Lee Wallace was actually I think looked at to direct this for a minute. If you watch the Halloween 2 documentary he didn't like the script. But you know, ha Halloween 2, is it a great horror movie or is it an expansion pack version of Halloween 1? Well, I love EA. It's in the game. Anything about this movie is at least you do get more backstory on Michael. You don't get a lot, but you get most, you get some, and you get like more to kind of whet the appetite. Wet. Unwet. And you like that. beginning of the movie you have a recap of the very of the ending of the first one shot with different camera angles which I mean it's not like the worst thing in the world but I mean the, the original ending was perfect I, I really like the way that he you know gets shot and he comes out and he falls out the off the balcony is perfect but they do have the camera angle where it's shot from below and you see him fall down and all that shit he that's like fine. He's walking on air but see but the cool thing was in, in the original ending with Halloween and Dr. Loomis is you know when he looks down he sees that he's gone you see this sudden like expression of like holy shit and you look up and, you, and he's He's looking around. That was so good. In this one, Dr. Loomis runs downstairs and then goes outside. He's like, holy fuck, he's actually gone. It's just not as impactful as the original uh, ending of the first one was. However, it's fine. Then he runs over and he like touches. He's like, oh, it's, it's fucking blood. <laughs> and that guy's running out and said, I've been trick-or-treated to death. I do like that scene when he says, I've been trick-or-treated to death. You know, is this a prank? And then Dr. Loomis is like, what? It's like, oh, what that is. Oh, yeah, he runs off. Like, that's a, a great scene. And then you have, then all of a sudden, the, the music changes a bit. Instead of the classic Halloween, dun, 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 you have this, like, strobe light, like, I don't know, 70s hippie fucking version of the of that theme song, which isn't the worst in the world. Well, the guy that but, brought in, like, John Carpenter had his classic theme, and he was like, I was basically brought in as a co-composer. And he was like, and I, I came in, and he was like, I, I went to, and I was like, John, this is how this works, and this is how this, and he was like, John Carpenter was basically like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't give a fuck. I don't, I don't. I have a pony. It was like I don't. I don't need to know how this works or that works. That's what you're here for. And then John Carpenter was basically like, "I'm going off to do this other thing." And he was like, "My job is just to update this a little bit, to change it, to add things to it, to make it a little bit different." Which, to me, the score, the second one doesn't touch the first one. The first one's way cleaner. Yeah. It's way better. Um, that's one of the things that falls off of well, it. Like, this I just don't know why you would even put the synth effect in with the Halloween theme music overall. Like it was like fine. I don't know why it wouldn't just transition to the new one. I think it was just one to put a fingerprint on it with this new composer and like this is my touch on it it's fine it's not the worst thing in the world it kind of has a vibe of psycho 3 if you remember that that um that theme sequence that was going throughout the film it's it's like that it's not the worst thing but, but the coolest part really from there after dr loomis runs off into the night is the opening shot with the with the skull in the fucking oh, jack o lantern one of the best that openings. is one of the best like other than like uh, like i love that sequence but i also love i don't know if it's halloween four or five when he's like slicing up the fucking uh, five is when he's stabbing it that was the cool i the, to me overall that like the movie sucked ball sack but that movie in halloween five the opening mm -hmm. sequence is my favorite however this one's close because yeah. it starts peeling like that you're like you know that's how you are at the doctor's office thinking you have a simple itch on your genital and you find out that you have chlamydia the worst day of the week you're like shit but when it, yeah it slowly opens up and that skull's underneath it it's just a badass opening And then, so basically the story is, uh, Michael Myers gets up off the grass, and in this one, I don't know if it's a different take or different shot, I think it is than the first one, but Michael Myers imprinted so much fatter in the ground. He looks like the Kool-Aid man just broke loose, like... Michael Myers was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> he had that fucking scorch mark. NBA Jam. Uh, and he runs, and, and he's going through the streets, and you see, he looks in the house, and uh, it, it's a really amazing scene. It's the Elrod scene, where he... he, he peeks through the window, he sees Mrs. Elrod making those goddamn, you want mayonnaise and mustard? He sees the sandwiches, he goes in, and I think it's so interesting, um, much like Michael with kids in the future films, like, he chooses for some reason not to kill Miss or Mr. Elrod. Maybe they were just too easy. Like, he, they were just, they were geriatric folk, and they were making sandwiches in the middle of the day, or middle of the night, like, eating their food. And he's like, I, you know, I don't, I, I'm fucking tired. I don't, I didn't, I, like, 
It could be easy for me, but I want to challenge a little bit. I'm tired, but I want to challenge. It's funny though, when he's he comes in to steal the knife from Mrs. Elrod after she turns to look at the uh, you know the TV bulletin is like you know an escaped inmate killed three people last night or or tonight or whatever. And he's like, what? Like Michael Myers pops in the door to like kind of see because he's like he can't afford cable. Like he's like the neighbor that can't afford cable, and he's like looking at it. And he he grabs the knife. and He's like, you saw nothing, and then he like darts out of the frame. He but bleeds then, directly on the ham sandwiches. What if she had just thought that was ketchup? I just put up. <laughs> I always thought that. Like she immediately goes. Uh, like so. So she goes to check on Mr. Elrod or whatever. She comes back and you Michael, sleeping again. And she immediately screams. And I'm thinking. If that were me, I would have just been like, oh, where am I fucking bleeding from? Like, is there a fucking yeah, I wouldn't have, the I wouldn't have assumed that something weird had happened. Yeah, she immediately goes into scream territory, but then the girl, the young girl across the street gets it. That's weird, though. So he passes up. He bypasses the easy kill, and then he's like, that's a three-star rating right there if I get that kill. Uh, I'm really trying to up my Yelp. <laughs> like, I got to compete. And he's like, okay, well, I'll take her down. But, like, it doesn't make any sense for him just to forget that fucking neighbor, and then I'm going to go over here after I grab their butcher knife they were making, you know, mayonnaise sandwiches with, and I'm going to kill her. Like, but I it's, like it's a weird... It makes you think. It is. Well, I mean, it just makes you think, like, Michael was either, like... I, maybe Michael thought she was hot or something. I don't fucking know. I he mean, likes babysitters. But also... I do think it's funny, and it's, it's not funny, it's cool though actually, it's funny and cool at the same time, when before that sequence goes down with the Elrods and into the into the young girl that he kills eventually, uh, you do see him darting between the houses and looking around and he's like, you know, and he's, he is bleeding, I mean we know that he's bleeding because Dr. Loomis touches and sees blood, but he, you know, he looks and sees Dr. Loomis in the police car screech up, and he, your doctor's like, I shot him six times, and you hear all that stuff, and he's like, fuck <laughs> Uh, Michael Myers is doing that shit behind him. He's like, oh shit. And then he was like, he's like, dad's drunk again, huh? <laughs> it's like in the first one, Loomis is standing on the street and Miles just, Myers just drives by just to be a dick. It's like when you're skipping in school and you drive right by yeah. your parents. It's but, like, well, he, uh, it's like he knows that he's, he, they're talking about him and, and he's like, oh shit. It's like if you saw your ex girlfriend out and about and you didn't know you were going to run into her at the party, you're like, oh, <laughs> tuck out. I love Loomis in that scene though because he says, I shot him six times, like 12. He's like, no, I shot him six times. I shot him six times. Yeah, the sheriff, six sheriff like, time. get the car. <laughs> so, stop your mouth. Uh, yeah, and then, it, you know, so the, the first kill of the movie, nonetheless, they did a really good job transitioning that flow movement from the first one at the very end to this one. And it does, like you said, and most people would agree, it could be just one continuous film from the first one. And, and that's hard to do, three years apart and making it feel like it could just smoothly and it, transition it into it felt that way. Yeah, but... So the kill comes, uh, <laughs> this is always, so she's on the phone, she's like, oh my God, like somebody died in Haddonfield, can you believe it? But what's Jimmy's wiener look like? And they're talking whatever <laughs> girls talked about in the 70s, I don't know, or early 80s. And Michael opens the door, because you don't lock your fucking door, I guess, back then, or in 81. He walks in, he's like, oh shit, nice house. Towards the bathroom, and he ducks to the right, and then she's still on the phone, then she looks over, and he's not there. She walks back, and it was the funniest, like, kind of kill to me, because Michael, like, Super Mario Brother jumps out of nowhere. He's like, <laughs> he just ate that mushroom. <laughs> yeah, he fucking got that, and then he killed in the first kill of the movie. And, and that was one of the things John Carpenter went back and reshot. Like, it's a crazy story, and I'll probably get it wrong here, but uh, one guy is this guy's brought in to edit the TV version of the original film. Mm -hmm. Next door, John Carpenter and Deborah Hill are editing Halloween 2. John Carpenter brings him in from the room next door and, and, and starts to ask him, he's like, I want some fresh eyes on this. But eventually, what ends up happening is John Carpenter goes back to film more scenes because as we talked about in the Halloween review in the first Halloween movie you didn't need blood and it was one of the special things about it that it didn't have gore but now three years have passed there's been copycats there's been other films that have happened and uh, they felt like they even though Dino De Laurentiis did not want he wanted them to go back to the natural style of this um, there was a constant, a lot like with Halloween 6 when it ends up happening, there's a, there's a constant battle between directors and producers about how much gore, uh, the, the pirate kid scene who gets the razor blade uh, candy in his mouth, like some people was that what it was? that shot in. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, he'd eaten a piece of candy and it had razor blades in it. Ooh, but um, dark shit. You know, constant stuff like that. And, and they were always going back and forth with this. But that kill was actually one that John Carpenter went back and shot to add more gore and, uh, and kill scenes in the film. But it was quick. He just jumped up with his Shit, this, 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 yeah, yeah. Six million dollar man. That's all it was. Blood it was on her face and it's done with and it's over with. God damn you, Samuel. Get away from that swing set. I was tired. I was almost retired. That man shouldn't be driving. 
Now we go into like the chase, the crazy wild chase of Loomis out in the streets. Like there's kids out everywhere. He doesn't believe that this shit's. Well, I did like. Uh, well, you know, to, to Donald Pleasant's credit, I mean, and, and overall the film is solid. I like Halloween too. It just. It, there's something about it, it just feels just fucking kind of wild and crazy as far as the story they want to tell because it's all over the place. But I guess maybe they were going for the phonetic kind of chaotic energy that just, this had just happened. And Dr. Loomis being the psychiatrist for Dr., uh, for Michael Myers is like in fucking a state of almost shock and just trying to figure out what the hell to do. And he, I shot, like, I guess if you could put yourself in that, if you shot something six times and it just walked the fuck away. And he says it. He's like, he's not human. Yeah. Like, he, he literally says it. He puts it right out he's there. He's like, that that I had last night, it wasn't you, but, uh, but yeah, so you see that, and I guess if you put yourself in that position, you're like, okay, I get it, but it just, it, it, in some way, it just feels so chaotic, almost like control chaos, but and when he's running around, up in I do kind of like, I, I did kind of like the, the, the fact that he was running around trying to rally people and trying to make them understand that this is shit is weird, there's something really wrong, like it's, it's supposed to be just a guy that was in a mask and he was killing, but I shot him and now he's fucking rock, walking around, I like that they're putting so much emphasis on that. And that's when you get to the, well, famous Ben Tramer scene. I was going to say infamous. It's, it's not infamous. It's famous. It's an amazing scene, man. It's a really fucking cool, crazy, wild scene. Because it, it really does, like, set Michael Jackson's hair on fire. And by the way, I'm just going to let you know, before all this is going down, they've taken Laurie Strode. They're on the way to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So Laurie Strode is being transported to the hospital by also the creepiest motherfucker, level 5,000 stalker, Jimmy and Bud. Yeah. But we'll We're, get there soon. Yeah. And, and this scene, uh, Ben Tramer is <laughs> like, that's kind of Michael Myers. I was just like, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I'm just gonna no. say he was obviously drunk. I mean, that we'll, we'll know that later on. But he had a he had a, a, a fucking candy sack like in his right <laughs> hand, and Doctor Loomis is like, "There, wait, there he is!" And then he, it's like, I don't like. I know that maybe Doctor Loomis was in shock, but would you ever think that Michael Myers would just stop after killing three people? He snatched somebody's fucking candy cane bag and was like, "I need candy corn." Maybe he was trying to blend in. But it was funny because he's yelling. He's like, "Stop right there!" And he was like, "Oh, don't go this way." I was like, "What the it's fuck?" Typical guy when the cop tries to stop you like I didn't I didn't I'm gonna run and plus that kid was like 17 years old and he yeah. had a, a fucking he was trick-or-treat like, what the hell are you doing <laughs> that was fucking crazy man uh, yeah you do find out later from his friends that they're like I'm worried about my friend Ben He's, he was drunk and they're like oh fuck we killed Ben which they didn't like they're kind of at fault for that but at the same time you walked down the middle of the street if the cops tell you to stop you should stop so look both ways he's burning on fire in front of everybody and they're like well that's Michael Myers and Loomis is like I don't know. Yeah, well, how the fuck are you supposed to know? He's on fire. He's like, is that him? It's not him. He's like, I don't fucking Probably. know. And then, yeah, and then you, your part, uh, when uh, the deputy shows up. <laughs> by the way, this acting performance by this blonde haired guy is one of the worst I've ever seen. It's not It's not the worst, but it's up there. It's either good or bad. I don't even know, because it's, uh, to me, I like it. Like, I mean, he, but he comes out of nowhere, they're all standing around there, and like, the deputy, the blonde dude, looks like Ric Flair's cousin, runs up to Bracken. He's like, Woo! Sheriff, they found three kids dead. What a was that? <laughs> <laughs> and he grabs his shoulder and then Loomis like runs and he gets in the car. Well, I, but first off, if I had been Loomis, I'd be like, maybe I shouldn't be with you right yeah, now. That's what I thought. Like, I, was I was like, like maybe you shouldn't go. It, it's, it, it's a sensitive subject. He's already blaming you it's for like letting him out. like when you break out. your friend's window well, and you're, you know his wife's going to find out, so yeah. you just leave. I think it's funny. Like, well, he's already like, damn you for letting him out. I was like, I, I didn't let him out. I, I didn't do it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. Uh, but it was funny because that was, that was already the conversation that Sheriff Brackett is having with him as they're driving around the neighborhood. And by the way, this entire time, Sure, um, Dr. Loomis has his gun. He's like, would you put that thing away? Like, it's like Dr. Loomis doesn't know how to use it. He's like, eh, I don't know. Look. I love the scene, though. It's like, but, a, it's like a straight-up commercial at one point. And this is after all that happens. But he's riding around the sheriff. And the sheriff's like, all right, we'll go look for Michael with you. He's sitting in the car. And he's loading his gun. And the sheriff, or the deputy looks over at him. He's like, it heightens my sense of security. Oh! <laughs> it's like you know, a gun. You, it's like an NRA see, Did you see his face? He was like... <laughs> but yeah, but look, when they were when the, when Brackett and him were uh, driving around to kind of locate Michael Myers before Ben Tramer died, well, I know we're kind of going over. What we're, this is this is the movie actually. Halloween Team. It's a wild place. It's a wild. Uh, but when they're going around, they're driving around. Uh, <laughs> Sheriff Brackett is like at this point he's fucking frustrated. He's like, you shot him six times. Like he's dead. Like there's no man that could take six slugs. And, and then he's like, you don't know. You don't know what I know. And then he was like, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. It's like a dad talking to his kids. Yeah. Like he's like, I'm almost there. 
I'm almost there to turn the car around and there will be no Dairy Queen tonight. You're about to get fucked up. And so after, you know, he tells them, you know, it might, you know, one of them might have been Annie, which is, of course, uh, Sheriff Brackett's daughter. They screech off into the night to go to the house where Myers murdered all, you know, Lori's friends. Well, and we'll get there because I figure we might as well talk about that part, that chunk of the film before we get to the, the, the main part of the film. But when they arrive and you find out there's a reporters and there's, it's a, it's a hubbub of activity. You know, Sheriff Brackett runs over and, and, you know, they're bringing the body out of Annie, which is actually, she actually gets the cameo in it. They pull the sheet back, it's de she's dead. And then you have this really awkward thing. Like, Dr. Loomis really doesn't look like he shows any kind of remorse or, <laughs> yeah. like, he's like, I've seen dead bodies he's all loading the time. His gun he's like, I've been in Vietnam. <laughs> like, and he's like, and then, but it could have also been one of those weird things too. Like when you know you've done something wrong, like if you got drunk and pissed in somebody's closet and you know you shouldn't have done it, but you have to be there in the morning when they find it. He's like I told you I didn't and do like, shots. Oh, shit, fuck it. And then he's like, you, he's like, it. yeah, you're like playing with your fingernails, but there's nothing <laughs> under them. And you're just like, oh. <laughs> and then, and then like, he's like, because you know that Dr. Loomis is expecting it. Because, uh, by the way, uh, it does, when the when the blonde hair cousin of Ric Flair, like you say, the deputy is like, uh, it's like, go home, Lee. <laughs> it's like, We've got it from, covered from here. And then Jeff Buck's like, I've got to go home and tell my wife that our daughter's dead. And then he looks at Dr. Loomis. And, oh. and, see, Dr. Loomis knew it was coming, dude, but Dr. Loomis was like, trying to like turtle him up. He was like, I know. And then he was like, damn you! And he's like, damn you. And then Dr. Lou's like, I didn't, I didn't let him out. I, I told him, I told him not to let him out. And he was like, God damn you for letting him out. It's like, like in Lethal Weapon 2 when Danny Clever kills that kid and he goes to the funeral and the wife smacks him in the face. Like, yeah. You just shot at me. And he's like, but Dr. Lewis never gets excited. Like, you know, he's like screaming at him. He's like, but I didn't do it. I didn't know what you're saying. <laughs> no, that wasn't me. And then Sheriff Brackett like runs off into the night. So now the deputy and him team up. And basically what he, what the doctor, Dr. Lewis wants him to do is first he wants to get a dentist down there to identify this body that burned up. Smart. Yeah. Very clever. He drank his Cialis. Um, is that a thing? No, I don't think you can drink it, Jay. I think you gotta eat it in pill form. Or you can... It's for your dick. By the way, if you'll notice, there's a bunch of reporters around and he starts screaming. Like, Dr. Loomis is like the high-strung girl that gets on a plane for the first time. You're like, can you fucking calm down? You're like, no, we're gonna fucking crash! And he's getting more and more crazy because he's like, I told him I shot him six times! And he starts yelling and screaming and then there's this one bitch reporter, she's like, what? Yeah, well, everyone's watching yeah, him. It yeah. looks like Nicolas Cage talking to Vince Neil outside of that casino on that TMZ video. He's like, this is my friend! <laughs> well, like, this is my and, friend! And you can see the deputy's like, oh, damn, calm the fuck down, yeah. fine, we'll go get a dentist. So they go rush off to get the dentist and uh, identify this body that they may or may not be Michael Myers. In the meantime, we get to the hospital where Lori Strode has just arrived with, again, level 5,000 hyper-level stalker. Where the plane lands. And there is a cool scene where um, where the whole town's like throwing rocks at my, my, Michael Myers' house and it reminds me of Strange, yeah, I, I Strange do, Land with Dee Snyder. I do like the fact that Dr. Loomis just like wants to sound smart, so he's like, the tribe! He's <laughs> like, the tribe lost one of the hell, now they're going up to it. And, like, I was like, what what are you talking about? That's like, when he starts to look crazy as yeah. fuck. And then there's the, there's also the scene where they go to the school. We're like, oh, we found out he was at the school. We probably broke in. And they run to the school, and then you get the, you get a bunch of awkward scenes that almost could have been taken out. of I don't even know what they went. Okay, he went to the school. He broke in. He stabs a picture that that a little kid colored. Yeah. And then he wrote Sam Hain. I didn't know the motherfucker could write at all. Like, how did he learn how to write? Because he stared at a wall for 15 years since and he was six. And it's before everybody comments down below. Is that uh, what? They, it's a uh, Sawin is how it's correctly pronounced. They, pronounce, they pronounced it wrong in the movie. Sawdust. Uh, the nurse from the original comes around and she's smoking like a fucking freight train like she always does. They're in the car. The sheriff's job's to take them away. And uh, this is where you get the exposition that was added in to make uh, Michael and Lori uh, brother sister. Did you notice that uh, also? It was funny because at the very, early on with Dr. Loomis, when the deputy gives him a, a smoke and, and like the lighter, he holds the lighter. He, and he never smokes. He never cigarette. smokes it. He looks at it, he's like, just give me a cut. But he's halfway then, through his. But he holds it. But he holds it and looks at it more. And then when the nurse shows up, she gives him a lighter in the hallway. It's all like those little tiny uh, subtle things that they put in that lead up to the eventual end of the film. Because yeah. Dr. Loomis always always like he's fast. He's like, this makes fire. What this do? You want me to smoke this? I have made fire. Uh, but <laughs> but yeah, it comes into play later. It does. And that's like, again, that's like foreshadowing. And they did a really good job with that. Yeah. And, and like, I always felt like uh, Dr. Loomis, by the way, when the, when the nurse does show up after, after he's looking at Sam Hain, and Dr. Loomis gets real creepy, like Edgelord 5000 with kids. Like, he's like a kid that's like trying to be gothic. He was like, it means summer of Eve. It means that you will sacrifice 
Incan babies so to I'm the trying, volcano. No. That was actually the first mention of the druids, by the way. Yeah, he it mentions was. the druids in his explanation of Halloween and, and how then, we're all, we've not come far as a human race. Well, the cops are like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? Obviously, Sam Hain is a new burger from McDonald's. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, yeah, and then the nurse comes in, and it, he's such an asshole. Dr. Loomis is a cool asshole, though. He's like, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I forgot your name. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you just met her last night. <laughs> like, I don't know who you are. Uh, but yeah, it was cool. He's like, hey, there's another file on Laurie Strode and Michael Myers. Like, I've seen everything. <laughs> That's the best. But also, I, I do like the fact that uh, Loomis is like feeling very good and very nice when she's like, the governor has ordered us back. He's like, the governor. <laughs> like, oh my god, I finally got some recognition. Uh, yeah, and you're right. When he's talking about the file, like he, he's snarky as shit. Like he knows. Like yeah. he's like that guy, that friend you know that. He knows everything about everything. It doesn't matter what you try to tell him. Like, you try to tell him something new, and he's like, I already know it. I read it. And you're like, well, you like, I mean, this is brand new. Like, I already read it. <laughs> like, I read it before it came out. And like, when she's trying to tell him about the new file on Lori and, and Michael. Anyhow, that's a little quick on yeah, Dr. Lewis. That's all the stuff going around outside of it. But the, the meat and potatoes happens at the at the hospital. Mm. Um, you go to the hospital. Lori's there. You mentioned Jimmy showing up with his fro, being creepy, like just touching your finger, like Are you okay? like right away. And he even tells the, uh, Bud in the hot in the ambulance. He's like, you know this chick when Bud's driving. He was yeah. like, yeah, uh, like three years ago, my my little brother like went to school there. It's like so. She's technically still a minor, you motherfucker. Because <laughs> like, you're like three years older than her, so you gotta be in your 20s, and she's 17. And really, this is the the hospital stuff has some of the best sequences in the entire movie, and it's got some of the most. It's, it bogs it down more than anything else in the film. Like, once you get to the hospital and all the shit's going on, there's so many fucking scenes. Like, there's some cool shit. Like, when Lori's being wheeled in by uh, by Bud and them, uh, they, they ask the nurse about the doctor, and she's, she's like, he's been, at the, uh, he's been at the country club. He's probably still drunk. And then you got this doctor who walks up like Dr. Chalice, and he's like, oh, yeah. Uh, Oh, you're cut. This sucks. It's like more coffee. <laughs> yeah. and then, but you know, uh, well, that's what universal healthcare I get you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. There's good uh, things yeah. like that, and and you know, there's there's tons of cool shots of Michael. He looks cool. There's the there's the security cam footage, but there are so many fucking shots Unnecessary, of, just, yeah. of just boring shit. Like like we get it. Like Lori knows what's going on at this point. She doesn't want to be put to sleep, but she is drugged. But there's so many expositional shots of of Michael walking around or Lori crawling around of. Shots that don't lead to anything that just really make everything feel a little bit long and drawn out. And I feel like if Halloween 2 uh, were, and we'll get to the, this in the final rating or whatever, but I feel like if Halloween 2 were edited just a little bit more, like if it were just cut down at certain scenes, I think it would have flowed a lot better, better, and I think it would have been um, way more well received. Well, like the. the yeah, the walking around parts of Michael, like, you know, when he's on the security cam footage and, and the fat security guard falls asleep, Mr. Garrett, and he doesn't see him walking around. It looks cool. I mean, it's cool. It's Michael Myers walking around, but it's like, it, it, okay, cool. I mean, what is it? It just, it adds a little extra flavor to the film, but overall it's not needed. It's well, not like you're needing that extra spice to make it. You what, the, what they're guilty of, really, is they're building up atmosphere to a point where it's not any more atmospheric. It's just yeah. like you're, you're filling space. Michael's already full yeah. tilt at this yeah, point. You're filling, Let's go. you're filling time to get to the kills because you know if you make a fucking 30 minute film of Michael just whooping ass then people are like it's only 30 minutes so it's like you're just filling space yeah um, and like, like the cop like like the security guard cop death is cool because we get to see him get a hammer to the to the head yeah. much like Jason did in uh, in part 2 uh, with, the, with a hammer kill it's pretty cool but why do well, we have to watch the, the security guard go outside and investigate for 10 minutes and then a cat scares him? Like, th that kind of shit should just be pulled right well, the that, fuck out. That felt like uh, a cheap ass, like, scare a lot of, uh, you know, horror directors are guilty of now. Like, yeah. you don't have a solid story, so you gotta throw something bullshit Cut in there. Cut it out. I love it. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, but also, uh, I mean, I peed a little because I don't like jump scares. I don't fuck it all! It scares me. It's just a cat. But, um, yeah, and then you, you know, some of the cooler scenes you don't even get to see, like, I wanted to see, because. I'll tell you one thing about Michael's kills in this. He gets very MacGyverish yeah. with his shit. And I like, like it. Like, it's cool. Like, yeah, it's very versatile what he's doing. Like, he went back in time to fix some shit, and he fucking's going to get versatile with Like, he felt like uh, the guy from Quantum Leap. Like, I, uh, to go back in time and fix things. Like, he's using all these, like, new techniques. Like, uh... Like the nurse, the head nurse of the of, of the film, she's like, "You were late again, and don't you be in here. Visiting hours are over." Even though Jimmy was a psychosexual predator, I have no doubts in my mind, and she probably saved Jamie. But um, I mean, Lori. But anyhow, um, like that head nurse gets like bled out. Like Michael sticks a fucking IV thing in there and drips her to death. And I'm like, I, we didn't see that scene. We didn't see the death scene with the doctor with an, uh, a fucking needle stuffed in his eye. Yeah. But I will say this: the I shot, the shot of the camera 
and the um, the rope, uh, dr uh, the IV dripping out, and the blood going into an entire blood floor. That was a gorgeous shot. That was artsy as fuck, and it, and it reminded me of like 70s exploitation horror and like some of the crazy shit they did. That one shot, I mean, I don't know what it was about that shot, dude, but the but the blood dripping out of the IV hose into the, the floor that was made of entire, entirely blood was just really freaky to me, and yeah. I loved it. But then, you know, Jimmy comes in, and he just slips and hits his fucking head. Funny story about him, that's kind of his death in the movie, in a weird way. Did he like, die? He slips, he bangs his head, he hits his head hard as fuck. Like, he's definitely going to be in concussion protocol for the rest of the season. Um, when when Lori sneaks out to the car, and once <laughs> they if, if, if that Will Smith should have come up, it's like, tell the truth! <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, Head trauma. And what's an intense scene when Lori goes out into the parking lot in her gown and she's crawling around, she gets in the car, she's safe, he fucks it up for her because he comes out there and jumps in and like, he's like basically, he's basically Hawkeye and Avengers now. He's like a zombie. He's like, he's useless. let's start the car. Hey. Yeah. There was an alternate ending where at the very end when she's being carted, carted away, uh, she's sitting in the back of the ambulance and you think the horror is over and the sheet sits up and then the sheet comes off and it's actually Jimmy and she smiles and he's okay uh, and they actually cut that out uh, of the entire thing so I guess this is basically where his story ends you don't really know I guess he to me it was Michael maybe stabbed him in the stomach at some point and that added to it or maybe the concussion actually killed him I don't think he died I think he just had a concussion and then knocked his ass out for the next three weeks God damn you Michael God damn you, black truck! Hot tub? The hot tub. Best scene. It was the yeah, best it's, kill. It's in the, the movie. best kill. Yeah. Uh, when he comes in there, and, and the reason why it's so unique and different and stands out, because Michael gets frisky with the girl. And I've never seen him do that. And I don't think he's ever done that in any of the other sequels ever. Uh, so. Bud is getting down there and trying to get freaky dicky with this girl that's obviously wanting to give it up to him. They're down the hot tub and they're fucking or they're going to fuck around. And then Michael comes in and starts turning the heat up. He turns the hot tub heat up. And she's like, it's really hot. He's like, okay, well, I'll get up and fix it. And he's like, but I mean, it's cold too. I don't want you to think my wiener's small. And she's like, it can get cold in here. It's like, well, okay. And he gets up there and, he, and he, you know, he's fucking around with the, with the temperature. Michael comes over and strangles him, kills his ass, then... What 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 the best part is is when he comes behind, he comes behind her. Hmm. When he walks up behind her after he kills Bud, he he does this thing where he puts his hand on her her uh, like shoulder after she's got her robe on or whatever. And I was like, first off, like Michael's never done that, but like, Michael's like, oh, your skin is so soft. Is that like <laughs> olive oil? And then she's like, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Bud. Like I just gotta go pick up my ship. And he starts like nibbling on his finger or whatever, like kissing on it. And it's like, first off, you would have tasted probably butthole and like boogers yeah. and blood. But it just, she's like, oh, oh. To be honest, Bud seems like his his fingers probably smell the same. Well, he was in a hot tub, though, so he probably all washed away. It probably just smells like hot tub. Oh, just chlorine and desperation at that point. But anyway, yeah, he's holding her and he's doing this. It's only when she starts, like, he kind of touches her boobie. He's like, fuck. He's like, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> I think that Michael was. I've getting, got business to I think Michael maybe. was kind of like, well, you know, whatever, if the finger fits. <laughs> but, uh, and then she turns around and obviously, and he takes her face and shoves it into the fucking scalding hot water and he waterboards her to death basically and then when she pulls out burns her to death yeah you see her face kind of melting off or whatever great fucking death scene kind of reminded me of uh, Jason X when he f f uh, flash freeze that bitch's face yeah. and smashes it on the thing it was still done really well I mean even though if I'm glad they didn't zoom in on it because you can tell that when they're shit was going flaky. It, well, it was it, well flaky, but it, it didn't look. It looked fake. Head and like, shoulders. It looked fake. Oh, I thought it looked nasty. No, when she's on the floor, it looks good. I mean, at that point, because they actually can apply the makeup. But when she's like dunking back and forth, they just look like they use like some Dunk plastic donuts. And shit. Fun story about that scene is that Bud actually went down there, and they actually. Uh, they were like, oh, we need somebody to do this nude scene. And he was like, fuck it, I'll do it, because he's just that kind of guy. Amazing Grace, come sit on my face. Mm. Um, but he goes down, and he's going to do it. And then at the last second, the actress backs out, and she's, like, fighting with her agent and stuff like that. She's trying to say she's not going to do it. So the director, uh, Rick Rosenthal, comes up to uh, Bud, and, and he's like, hey, man, can you go ahead and get in the water? Maybe that'll make her feel a little bit more comfortable. So he gets in the yep, water. Here's my <laughs> the water's freezing fucking cold, and he's like, he's like, and the actor was like, it was like a fucking raisin. <laughs> it was like a tiny little, and then he had to do the scene with this gorgeous woman with his dick all shriveled up and cold and stuff like that. I, I do feel like one of the major th things that, that Halloween 2 feels so not as special as the original Halloween is because the way Myers moves is so slow, it's not so fluid, it just, it really loses something. I, I think that uh, also, uh, the mask is just a little off sometimes. Like it just, I mean, I know why, I mean, we all know the story about why that mask's so weird. And it is the original mask they used in the original movie 
but it's been stretched and it's fucking it you, you can tell that time has damaged it over you know whatever yeah. Deborah Hill famously kept it in a shoebox under her bed I don't know if she was doing that and when she smoked a lot maybe it was yellowing I don't fucking know but it just looked a little weird it looked off I mean he had a fucking giant nose it, it just something about that mask maybe took people more out of the scenes than they should have been. However, Dick Warlock did a, a passable, not even, he did a phenomenal job with the role. I mean, yeah. as far as that particular killer in that movie, he did fine. Yeah. Um, it wasn't Nick Castle, but it was, it, it, it was, a, it was a fine performance. You know? Yeah. It was, it was superb. You did good. You don't get to go home. You still get treats. Funny thing is, one of everybody's favorite scenes, one of my favorite scenes, which we'll get to in the end, is when he's like, when his eyes are shot out and he's slashing around. Which, scene. by the way, the, the, the bleeding tears of eye mask is fucking, oh my God. It's great. But when he's slashing around, um, he said he was like, everybody comes up and tells me how much they love that scene. And for some reason, he hates it. He was like, I fucking hate that scene. Probably because he know? didn't know. He didn't, he probably was actually... You know, because he was doing this, and he probably didn't know if it looked good on camera. With well, no, he, he says he hates it now, like the way it looks. Oh. I'm like, dude, I love that. Yeah, scene. Well, but anyway, so after the after the hot tub scene, uh, basically you have Michael stalking Lori around the, the hospital for 15 minutes. You do get a really cool scene actually when she's running away. She's doped up. She, you can tell, like, you know, the camera is enough where it's like, kind of tilted, and there's a blood, you know, furry. Furry, fuzzy shit. The blonde nurse kill. Yeah, it's pretty special. In the back, he picks her up. He's like, "I want to show you how fucking strong I am." Her Crocs fall off. What I love about that scene, love, is that uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is is uh, she's doped up, right? So you see it from her point of view, and I don't think the scene gets enough credit. But when she's looking at this nerf, nurse and he's holding her up by, with a scalpel, by the way, which I love the meme that it's like surprise finger in the butt. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he puts the bad. scalpel on her back and picks her picks her up. Uh, but when Lori looks. It's like this weird James Bondish almost like everything's kind of blurry and she almost doesn't know if what she's seeing is real because it's like is he really fucking here? Am I just doped up? Is this fucking happening right now? Yeah. And it's a really surreal scene and I really love that shot and I don't think it gets enough credit but it's cool. Well it also looks like uh, when he's doing it he's just wanting Lori to know like I bench a good 350. <laughs> finally gets to the elevator and it's funny because beautiful scenery right there. yeah the way it looks yeah but Michael's walking real again slow maybe but maybe the reason why is because if he was walking faster he'd caught up to her and it would have made no sense and then she's dead so I'm not sure what she was going with that like if he'd walked any faster then it would have made sense with that whole drawn out sequence because just he's like, feels fluid, well, man. I think that Michael's thinking like, I got you. You're fucked. You're not going to go anywhere but because that thing is a slow-ass elevator because it's been repaired by the Super Mario Brothers. It's not going to get here anytime soon. She finally gets on the elevator, though. The door shut. What I think is funny that when the door is shutting, Michael puts his hand in there and he's like, oh, shit. It's, but he, he just literally picked a nurse up like this with one hand. It's like, you could have just right. gone... Bah! You can just open the door, yeah. but either way, you can't even catch a sensor. Dog. It's like it's like Michael Myers, like I'm defeated by an elevator. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Uh, and I think that was the thing. Like when Michael moved slow and he walked instead of ran, chasing her across the street in the first one, mm -hmm. it felt natural. It felt like he was freaky and just weird as fuck. And I think, and I, I I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm really not knocking um, uh, Dick Warlock, Dick Warlock, but. In this one, it felt like he was so aware of the fact that he was supposed to walk and move slowly, and we were aware of it, that it felt not, it didn't feel creepy and, and crazy and out there. It just felt like he was trying to be Michael Myers. They should just it, let him go. It just it like, lost the scariness. Yeah. Shania, Lori's in the parking lot screaming after sh her fuck up with Jimmy. Scratching her fucking nails. La, too, la, 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 la. Yeah. And, but why didn't you scream before they closed the door? Well, by I, the way? well, she couldn't get her voice, and then finally she got the you know surprise finger in the butt, which was the wind coming up and Michael coming out of the door, and it scared her enough. But anyway, she gets up, she runs the door. Michael's chasing her ass uh, across the parking lot. They open the door. She gets in. Now this is when it gets really cool, though, because Doctor Loomis is like, "Get back, get behind me, or whatever," and watches Michael walk through. That. He's like, "Plexiglass, what?" It's cool, but at the same time, uh, completely fucking. Unrealistic. I know it's almost like he doesn't even try. He's just like, "I'm walking through glass." You know what I think it is? I think that they walking used through glass. They used really good Windex, and he didn't know there was a door. He was like, "Oh shit!" You've seen those videos, <laughs> American Funny Some videos, or something like when when they shut the sliding glass door and they don't know that like little kids run right into it and smash through it he was like oh it's clean <laughs> and he just walked straight through like what is he i mean he, like no, no matter how strong you are he didn't put any force into it he just kind of like walked he's through strong. the glass you know but i think he I, you know i guess i guess it goes back to show that he's a for, he's a force of nature like there's nothing that's going to prevent him if there's an obstacle he'll walk right the fuck but through if it. he walked through no matter how strong he is if he'd have walked up to glass like that and didn't put any force behind it he would have just been like 
Yeah. Well, <laughs> and backed up. It's so well, he would have kept doing it, too. But it would, nonetheless, it's a fucking cool shot. So, Loomis shoots his ass again. He shoots. He unloads his gun and kills him, what we think. He's laying there, and then and then stupidly, uh, the, the patrolman runs over, and he's like, oh, and he's like, don't go them! He's like, he, he's like, he's breathing. Another shot added by John Carpenter to add gore to the film. Yeah, obviously, you know, this motherfucker knows, like, Dr. Loomis knows that he's not human. That there's no way, and he's like, I can see, you, and this patrolman is- He's not breathing! This, this patrolman is so stupid, he's like, what do you mean? I like it when he, he, he sees her for the first time, when he realizes they're brother and sister, close. and he gets there, he's like, I'm sorry, I left you. <laughs> it's like it's like it's like you drunkenly at 3 a.m. trying to hit on that girl. You're like, hey, okay, I did okay. some Taco Bell. Uh, I'm sorry, okay. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, god damn. Uh, it's it's like somebody so desperate when they meet somebody on Tinder. You're like, do you like me? <laughs> uh, but yeah, he does. He gets real close. Like she could probably smell like the like. Uh, I don't know, Boone's Farm smell of breath or Maker's Mark and mixed with like egg sandwiches that he's like breathing in her face. <laughs> but yeah, so they run off, you know, into the, the getting away from Michael. Michael chases, at this point, Michael's full on. Like, Michael is badass. And by the way, when he stands up after he slashes that security guard, it's like this, like, fucking, I don't know what they did. It just made him look like rising and, and kind of taking over the screen. It looked fucking amazing. He stalks him down the hallway to uh, an auction room. And then Dr. Loomis is in there with, with the Lori, and he's like, take the gun. And she's like, no, no, no. He's like, take the fucking gun, bitch. <laughs> and like, she, he lays at her feet. He's like, fuck it. You don't want it. I'm going to take my gun. But of course, he gave her the loaded gun, and he didn't check his own bullets. Because when Michael finally breaks through this door, and he like, hold it. It's funny. And that was a good door break. That was cool. Because that was a thick fucking And, and you see door. how he did it, too? Like, when he breaks through, he's like, Fucking doors, <laughs> and then, like he, he looked like again. I want to throw out some fucking pro major props to Dick <laughs> Warlock in those scenes. He was amazing in that scene. Well, he looked like uh, Ultimate Warrior when he gets punched. He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it looked fucking bad. Like it looks really cool. And then when Doctor Loomis like tries to you know shoot him, he. he and then you have that cool scene where Michael's like, what? <laughs> He's like, you're not my friend. <laughs> and then he like, he, he stabs. But it almost, you know what? And I know I, I read too much into it because of whatever. I was just looking maybe at the relationship between Michael and Dr. Loomis. But it really looked like he really didn't go for a death kill. Yeah. Like, it looks like it's a stab kind of this like. This will hurt. Yeah, he's like, no, dad, I lead my own life now. <laughs> I uh, fight for me. Uh, for me. <laughs> and like, he kind of stabs it. And, my, and Loomis is like, oh. Yeah. Oh. But it's like. I've got this dad, and then you know Dr. Loomis backs away. He's like, you think he's dying? I guess if you watch the movie in '81, then he turns on Lori. He's she's like Michael, and he's like, he does stop me for a second. He's like, wait, you know me, bitch? Like, first <laughs> off, my name's Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen things that you don't understand. Your camera's in my face. It's that's a documentary. That's I don't care. Do you want to know about the darkness? She shoots him with the perfect accuracy. Expert marksman. Like, which is kind of cool though. Like I, I get people saying like, oh, she fired the gun that perfectly. But it's one of those fate again. Like she just perfectly fires like two shots. And I, I kind of like that they randomly just go into each eye hole. Yeah. You know, and then when that mask bleeds out, it's the coolest looking thing I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, he does this like, like not, not today. Yeah, like, but you see like, what, what? you see the glare. <laughs> what, what? Yeah, what, what? In the butt. Uh, and you see that, like the blood coming in the stream and you see the glare part of, of his eyes. The way they shot that, it actually looks like his fucking eyes are bleeding. Yeah. And then he, and he goes into, I have a headache. But it's funny, he's like, when he was like looking at it, he was like doing this, he, he got punched, like he got shot in the eyes, he was like, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And then he was like, oh shit, I can't see. I can take it. <laughs> and then he's like, yeah. Then he starts doing the, you know, the blind slashing and Dr. Loomis is not dead. He realizes that Michael's still on the loose and he's still trying to kill uh, Laurie Strode. He turns turning the gas canister on, and Michael's like, "What?" <laughs> They're basically playing Marco Polo at this yeah. point because Lewis is running like, "I got you, I got this one, I got this one," and Michael's getting fucked up because all the nitrous that's going to this room for a second there, he's like, "What if Michael just sat down?" Damn dog, I didn't mean to take a drag that deep. What if Michael sat down and just like got in any position after like smelling all this stuff? He was like, "I'm sorry, I did all this." <laughs> what if he started laughing? <laughs> no, he's like, "I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do this." Like, does anybody have a Twinkie, <laughs> a snowball? Maybe that would have been such a happier ending. But... Yeah, but eventually. What happens is Lori escapes the room after they fill this whole bitch up with nitrous, and then uh, <laughs> Doctor Lewis is like, "Michael, it's time." <laughs> Bick, yeah, and always he, trustworthy. He, he fucking lights it up, and they all burn in flame. And then you have that cool scene Dude, of uh, you have that cool that most visceral scene, maybe 
maybe i mean you've got the light scene where like the where his face pops out of the darkness which they use again in this by the way i think the most visceral scene of maybe the entire franchise is him walking through that fucking hallway while the while the fire rolls down the building and he's on fucking fire and it, it's just like oh my god he's never gonna fucking right. stop it, it reinforces it's the so nature of michael myers sick. yeah it reinforces the fact that michael myers is, is determined to kill whatever is in front of him and if he has his mindset you know he's a really good role model for children because if you have if you set your mind to it, you can do anything. Never, uh, and also, never surrender. Well, that's just the way anybody looks, though, after a 12-hour shift at work. You're on fire when you walk out. You're like, I won't stop. Uh, but yeah, he finally falls over dead, the mask burning and, and whatnot. And the mask, the, the close-up on the mask burning is another one of the things that John Carpenter went back and reshot. And it's weird. If you look at that, if you look at the stills from the Halloween 2018 movie of the uh, of the, the dude's decapitated head sitting there carved into a jack-o'-lantern, it's very, very much reminiscent of that shot, number one. Number two, it's another thing that you really got to give Dick Warlock hardcore fucking credit for because he said I'm walking through this scene and he's like stunt coordinators come up to me today and they're like that was the most insane thing I've ever seen did Dick do. Warlock actually do it or yeah, did, it was oh, it, he actually it was did it yeah. and he was walking through there wearing this and he was like my arms were burning he was like, we had to do the take again a second time. And my arms were burnt. So they put me out or whatever. He's like, I looked. And the zippers on the uh, overall Fire retardant. Yeah. yeah the, zip, the suit was fire retardant, but the zippers on it had burned his fucking arms. And then he went back and he did the take again. So that's the kind of shit, man. Like, that's, that's fucking... You've really got to give it to I am committed to sparkle motion. Yeah. Uh, Don't so, doubt my commitment. So, you you know, he's walking, he dies, what we think is... Uh, the, the, I, by the way, I was doing that weird thing when, when you get a zoom in on the mask. I was trying to say, can I see a face? Can I see, can I see his eyes? Can I see... He didn't get to see anything. However, uh, what happens is, is, you know, you get the classic ending... They're loading Lori up on the ambulance. She's the only survivor. There, you know, the uh, the blonde haired deputy comes out and asking like, "How many? You know, did we find?" He's like, 10 so far. Ten bodies." Um, and then the last shot is Lori on, in the ambulance driving away, and and then the music comes on, and it's just a shocked kind of like, "I can't fucking believe this happened." Kind of moment in her life, and I, I think they were going for the the not not the same extreme level. That Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the way that it ended, like kind of like this, but she was in fucking way Nicholas Cage shocked mode. She's like, <laughs> you're my shit. Lori Strode was more like, oh, I gotta study for chemistry. <laughs> like she was just in shock, like you could tell. And, but again, a great acting performance. And I think a good way to end it, as far as the way that they were driving away. And you know what, John Carpenter, Deborah Hill this was the end of the movie. So it's really easy if you're the if you're the person who says that's my timeline, it's just H1 and 2 well, blew and, I, up. and I'm so, done. Yeah. Like it's a it's a great ending. Like if that's the way Michael Myers dies and I'm glad that it's not because I love the sequels, even the shitty ones, I'm just glad the lore exists, but if 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 this is the end of it, it it's an amazing like walking on fucking fire, you know, until you literally drop and are, are completely put out is is He is what, a god among men. It's the coolest fucking ending ever, man. Like it's so Fucking amazing and cool and Loomis went out with his monster. You know, that whole idea is so fucking rad and and, and go. in their minds it was. Like they had no fucking intentions of this ever continuing. Dick Warlock asked him, he's like, Hey, can I keep the mask and shit? And Deborah Hill, I don't know if it's a combination of not knowing what you have, even after the success of the first film, or just really just wanting it to be over with, told him they're like, Take the fucking mask. She was like, Take the overalls, take it all. She's like, We're done with this guy. Well, We're done with yeah, it. Yeah, they I, wanted to be done. I think that uh, you know, a, a lot of people would agree that they were so classic with the first one, there was no need for a sequel. And John Carpenter definitely didn't want one. We did the damn thing. But the second one, if you were, if you're going to do a sequel, uh, it wasn't so far apart and you had the original cast returning. It was done good enough that it could be added in as just one continuous film and then you end it and it's done. Because yeah. even after that, which they probably did think it was done because they do Season of the Witch, like they, they were like, okay, well, we did this great story, but this, this unstoppable serial killer, Michael's and then and it's gone. Eyes. You know, it's yeah. whatever. But no, 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 no. Say at the man that you owe tax to. Not today. The fans say you owe tax to us. You give us sick one. You bought a sawed off sock. And then yeah, a cod said yes. You will suck my dick. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the, the sequels go on. But after this one. For a long time, it was dead. I mean, because yeah. uh, Revenge of Michael Myers doesn't come out until the late 80s. Right. So we have 81, and there's a big gap. Nothing. But still, 
As far as this movie's concerned, I'm gonna give this movie an 8.5. I like this movie a lot. I think it was a good ass movie. I think it was a good attempt and a, a good delivery on at least trying to recapture what they did in 1978 with the original one. It wasn't done by John Carpenter and there were some things that were uh, that just didn't really feel right or look right or, or, or just move right, I think, overall on camera to make it give the same kind of atmosphere. And maybe that was just because the setting was different with the first one. In this one, it was kind of all over the place. It was in a hospital. There's a lot more going on. In the, in the first one, it was a very simple story. I mean, a, a small town. And really, the killings took place between two houses. I mean, honestly, that's all it was. It was just a guy stalking babysitters. However, for what they had and what they had to work with and Nick Castle being gone and having Dick Warlock, they did a fucking phenomenal job. And I think this, I think the movie overall deserves a lot more credit than maybe it actually doesn't get. I, I'm not saying it doesn't get credit. I'm just saying it doesn't get as much credit as it should. Yeah. It's, it's an 8.5 for me too. That's, that's exactly what I was going to give it. I think that the movie is, a, it's a really super, super solid follow-up. It's got one of the coolest endings to a character if, if this was to be what it actually was meant to be and in the character. Uh, it's got some of the greatest... Michael Myers moments that are in the entire series. I think that Dick Warlock did a respectable job, but I think you lose the true essence of Michael at some point in this movie. Like it just doesn't feel like the same thing, even though everything around it feels the same. There was just a few tiny things in there that took out the scariness of it. And you've got some of the most iconic looking scenes. You've got some of the most iconic moments. The overall feel is there more so than any other sequel. It's it's most attached to the first movie, and it's it's a really solid follow-up um, but it's just you know what I don't think it was ever really truly scary and I think that's the main thing against it so um, it's a finger in your butt in the night when you're not expecting it but it feels okay comment down below let us know your all thoughts we'll be back with Halloween 3 season of the not fucking Michael Myers we love your goddamn faces if you're new to the channel click that subscribe button and get some motherfucking wham up in you Mr. Simon what bring me some cream not going to do it I need it for my coffee coffee and beans wow Uh -huh. mm. We watched a movie. We watched a movie.